Good morning, Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to bringing the zoo to you here at Brookfield Zoo. Again, I want to say thank you for joining us. You don't know how much it means to have all your continued support uh, through all these hard times. My name's Craig. I'm an animal care specialist here at Wild Encounters. With me today are Paul, Maggie, and uh, Nicolette, who will come up on screen in a few moments. But today we're doing a typical training session and play session for our North American River otter, Pascal. So I'm sure if you guys have been following us, you all know who Pascal is. Hopefully uh, you participated in the naming contest. Um, <laughs> starting off, Pascal is deciding to explore. He comes out here almost every day as long as this space is available to us. This is where we typically do our feeding sessions now, our training with him, and um, we let him play out here. He's got a pool set up. We so we can help him learn how to swim. Good. So right now we're doing some eight of these with him. So Paul just called him over to the station, Pascal. reinforced that Good. behavior, and then he's Pascal gonna send, her off to, send him off to Maggie. Good. So a, who's A and who's B? That's a good question. Is Who there... wants to be A? I think Paul will be A because we started with Paul. Okay. Good. I didn't know if there was like a <laughs> particular. Yeah. But see, an A to B could also be, it doesn't necessarily have to be a second person. Pascal we could send the animal there. off to a spot and then bring them back as well. Gotcha. But since Pascal's still learning how to do this and he's easily distracted, Pascal, we do have keepers good. on either end. Keepers that he's very comfortable with and that he enjoys spending time with. So he gets all excited when he hears Maggie say, Pascal, yeah. and he comes running over. So we also okay. just did a crate behavior. He's learning how to voluntarily crate. crate. So she'll call him out to the station. He gets reinforced for that. He's okay. eating fish today. Well, he gets fish every day. But um, he's eating fish now, and then she calls him into the crate. Because he's going to be... Pascal. At times needed transport. Here. If he were an ambassador animal, he would be going to events. He's not going to be one of those. But um, anytime that we can get him to go into a crate, either just to have him sit there so that they can clean and exhibit, or if he has to go to the, the vet hospital to get, uh, get a checkup, having him go into the crate on his own, where he's very comfortable going in there. It's not a stressful situation. Anything that we can do to make this a positive experience for him that's what we're going to do so now we just we're also getting him to again it's just like an a to b or a station training but getting him to go up on his scale so that we can get voluntary weights for him as well so while he is a, a handleable animal at this size doing these types of behaviors where we let him do this all on his own we don't have to pick him up or handle him or move him over um makes it easier on us especially with an animal that you know, typically these aren't animals that you work really closely with. Um, that just makes it easier right. for us to do all these things. And so now you're seeing Nicolette doing target training. And um, target training is a good basic starting behavior that we can teach pretty much any animal. Um, and target training is great because it's, uh, it teaches the animal the basics of training, like what's a bridge and what's reinforcement, hi buddy. Um, but we can also use the target training as a precursor or a lead into other behaviors. So right now you saw that he, the A to B's are going pretty well, but we could use the target to help train the A to B's. We can also use the target to help train him going into the crate. And uh, Pascal uh, likes to go to the bathroom in the same spot typically, <laughs> so that's his, um, his potty rug. Oh boy. <laughs> So what you're seeing now, again, like I said, target training. So the behavior is going to be that he needs to touch his nose to the target. And when he does that, Nicolette is going to bridge, which is, in this case, it's just good. But it could be anything like a clicking noise or a whistle, um, kind of like with clicker training on a dog. Anything that we've associated a sound with... Um, the food or the reinforcement that he's getting. So when she says good, he knows that he did it right uh -huh. and he's gonna get food for it. Um, here he comes, hey buddy. <laughs> he's also very good at following the keepers and he can get running pretty fast. But right now we are going to do a swim session with him if he wants to go up there. And so of course, everything that we do with him, all the training, that's all choice-based training. So if he decided he didn't want to do any of that, we don't force him to do it. We just let him kind of, as long as he's being a good boy, kind of do what he wants. And we'll try and maybe ask him a couple more times to do some of these behaviors. 
And if he chooses not to do that, that's okay too. So even though we're using the fish, that's kind of his primary diet, as we're using that as his reinforcement, he won't get that right away if he doesn't do the behavior, but we'll, um, we'll give it to him a little bit later so that way he doesn't associate those two events. Uh -huh. So again, we also, as he's living with us, we also had to help him and teach him how to swim a little bit. We didn't have to do a lot with that. But when it started out, we were putting him in a little tub and the keepers would just kind of have their hand in the water to, to support him as he got used to being in the water, as he got used to just how to feel and, and movement around. But it didn't take him long to just learn how to do it on his own. Um, he's a pretty smart guy. He's also very playful, so we do have a lot of pool toys in here for him. So he'll swim around and collect things and carry him in his mouth, throw, throw them, splash. Like he really enjoys his time in, in the water. <laughs> Do you take the bones out of the fish before you give it to him? When we first introduced him to fish, we did. So depending on which type of fish it was, but we would at least um, remove heads and tails and the uh, spine. Um, so right now he's getting silver sides, he gets herring and he gets capelin, there we go. And depending on which the size of the fish and what type of fish we will. So with the herring, we do um, remove the, the backbone. But the other two fish, um, he can eat. He eats the capelin, just not the head and the tail. Oh. And then the silver sides, he eats the whole thing. We just cut it into pieces for him. And he still gets a couple bottles each day, too, because we're still weaning him off of the formula. But he's down to just a couple bottles a day. And then at each feed, he gets um, a nice healthy portion of various fish. He enjoys it very much. He's zooming around so much I had to back up because I, I was getting dizzy. <laughs> yeah, he's very fast. <laughs> a wider shot. <laughs> and he's, he's just watching him learn and grow every day. He seems to be doing something new. Uh, so it's a very rewarding and good learning experience for us as well. Um, just seeing how, how much he progresses each day. Uh -huh. Especially with you know some of the stuff that we didn't even have to um, help as much. He just kind of figured it out on his own. Oh, someone wants to know who is cuter, a red panda or an otter? That's a great <laughs> question because um, red pandas are very cute. I think it's uh, oh, I think it's a bit of a personal preference, but it's also an individual thing too. So Pascal is awesome. I think he's adorable. But our red panda at Wild Encounters, Leo, I've worked with him for quite a while now, and he just, he's the cutest little dude ever. So it's hard to say. I'd like to, um, if only these two could be friends, and they could <laughs> hang out together, and we could put a Quilbert and, uh, with them as well, and the sloth, Timo. Oh, we have a really cool squad of cute animals to, <laughs> to would, steal the hearts something. of the world. Uh, just... <laughs> Look at him go. So right now he's actually drying himself off. Um, so when he gets out of the, the water, we, we're providing towels with him, for him, but he's going to dry himself off. And you can see how quickly his fur dries, which is um, one of the neat things about otters. It dries really quickly, but it also helps him swim really well. He's pretty aqua dynamic, and uh -oh. now he's climbing up Lynette. So I'm just going <laughs> to maybe redirect him a little bit. Come on, buddy. Go play. Oh, here we go. Yes. Sorry, Hi. I, I haven't seen you up. all morning. Um, so he's getting into a little bit of a <laughs> playful mood now, and, and again, we do let, we do encourage the play too, but we try and um, redirect some of that that playful energy to his toys, so that he's not like nipping at people and kind of associating like our hands and fingers with something that he can wrestle with. Um, so he does have like stuffed animals that we'll give him um, that he likes to to spin with and jump on and bite and. Because he, he definitely needs that behavior. <laughs> so now so he's in this teeny little pool. That's his, um, we call it his poop tub. <laughs> so he does um, defecate pretty consistently and well in water. And to prevent him from doing it in this nice pool where he should be swimming in a nice clean environment, we provide him a, a pre-pool, basically. He'll go in there and... Uh, Go to the bathroom first, and then we'll put him in here and let him swim. He does like that, uh, the poop tub, though. I don't know if he likes to just, <laughs> <laughs> just sit in there and pretend it's his hot tub. Oh, my gosh. But, um, does he eat anything besides fish? 
So, yeah, so right now, while we're still transitioning him onto a, a normal diet, he does get formula in a bottle twice a day, and that's mixed with, like, a wet dog food to help with the protein and stuff and to help with um, some of the solids. He gets a little bit of a dry dog food as well that he doesn't seem to care for as much, but he is starting to kind of realize that he should be eating that too, and then he does get um, quite a bit of fish every day. So no fruits or vegetables? No fruits or veggies. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so what's it been like for you to uh, work with any animal you've never worked with before? Yeah, it's been a great experience. Every single keeper here, even the ones in our area that don't specifically work with him, but have had a chance to see him and interact with him, have had such an amazing time with him. Um, again, you know, the learning experience itself, like we have had experience hand raising and bottle feeding with certain other animals, but most of us haven't done an otter yet, or let alone even worked with an otter because we don't have one in our area. But um, just learning all about this guy, learning about the process, watching him grow, watching him, you know, get smarter and learn new skills, getting to train him. Um, it's all been a rewarding experience. And the cool thing is like, you know, a lot of the training behaviors that we are doing with him now, that's stuff that we could do, we've been doing and can do with other animals too. So on that end, it's been, you know, fun to see him pick those behaviors up real quickly, just mm -hmm. like some of our other animals. Um, and that made it easy too, because we can still train him to do the same stuff that we train uh, with the other animals. But again, just getting to work with something new like this, uh, the learning experience alone was great, but you know, just watching him grow up, working with a, an animal that um, people don't get to see as often in the wild. Um, so we get to talk about him too, and kind of talk about the conservation message with the North American River Otter. Um, and people can see him and care about him and want to do more to, to protect his species. It's just, again, just a great experience. Usually, <clears throat> when the um, <laughs> animal ambassadors slash Wild Encounters staff are raising a baby, it's going to stay here as an animal ambassador. Yes. So what's it going to be like when you have to send him over to his new home? We're all going to call here? in for about a week <laughs> and because we're going to be so upset. No, but really... Um, we came into this knowing um, the goal was to make sure he's happy and healthy and able to go back. And so while we are all attached to him, we can still visit him over at the swamp. And um, being able to see him on exhibit with um, his parents, Benny and Charlotte, will be, you know, we know that we did, we did a good job. And um, we, that was our goal the whole time. Um, hopefully the keepers over there will... You know, they'll have an easy time working with him, too, because he is so uh, comfortable with keepers, and he will know a series of behaviors that will help them just uh, take care of him that much uh -huh. easier. So, But again, we'll be, we'll be a little sad when he goes. <laughs> is there anything that you've done differently with him, knowing that he's not going to be an animal ambassador? Actually, not really. Um, we treated him just like we treat, you know, all of our other animals, but that was kind of our directive, too. Mm -hmm. So okay. if we were told that, you know, this was going to be like a rehab animal, we would have been less hands-on with him. Um, you know, we would have made sure that he's getting his food, but, you know, we the goal would be to put him back out in the wild, and we wouldn't want him growing attached to people. Right. But since um, our goal was, you know, make sure he's happy and healthy, but also, you know, make him easy to work with for them over there and train him and, and teach him behaviors. We just treated him like we would treat any of our other ambassador mm -hmm. animals because he's one of us anyways. So, <laughs> And, I mean, that would be cool if uh, they were able to do some fun chats over there with him, maybe uh, over at the exhibit, and he'll come right up and see people, and, and they can give a good talk about him. And then and in that way, he's still an ambassador animal because he's still – you know, up there with the guests, the guests are still engaged with him and learning about the North American River Otter and, and Pascal in general. And in that case, he still is, you know, an ambassador animal. Is there a <clears throat> time frame for when he'll be moving over to the swamp? He will be once he's fully weaned. So right now we're actually working on having him visit the swamp a little bit just to get used to the sights, the sounds, the smells. Um, he did get to see his parents 
through the exhibit. Um, he was pretty much focused on the keepers and on the walkway, but the, Benny and Charlotte noticed him and they were uh, pretty amped to see him. Again, not that I would say that they knew for sure that that was their baby, but to see another otter, a young otter like that too, then, and the, the reaction that we got from them was so, uh, it was great and um, encouraging that it seems like he'll do just fine when he goes over there. But we are right now working on, as we have the time and the staff, because um, we have to coordinate with us and the department over there, we are working on getting him over there just for little bits at a time and, and working that process of transitioning. Oh, him over there but once he is fully weaned um so potentially sometime in may we will be making that transition to something mm -hmm. he he's got a little fake log in there that's really yes, cute and now he's gonna dry off again and it's really cute watching him do it so i mean the otters well the otters at the swamp and otters mm -hmm. in their natural habitats they don't have towels to dry off on no. so what do they dry off on they just air dry. Not really. They'll, well, as you can see, he does an initial shake right away, but they will still do this. They'll find something, um, some place that's kind of comfy and, and good for rubbing on and drying on, and they'll just kind of dry off that way too. How come they can dry off so fast? They're, uh, part, of the, part of it is their diet. The, the, a lot of the fish, they eat a, primarily fish, um, and that's good for their skin and their fur. It helps them. It gives him a nice sleek look at all times what are you doing no you can't find up here okay. um but you know it also makes it so that it does help with their swimming ability and it does help their uh fur dry better all right I, I, yes <laughs> hi there see good boy yes He's still trying to dry off a little bit more. <laughs> on you. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for watching us as we, you know, get to spend so much great time with this little guy. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a wiggle so, worm. He's wiggly right now. <laughs> thank you for supporting the zoo as always. And uh, yes, we hope to see you again very soon. Thank you.